every marriage goes through a little bit of turbulence. If you've had a disagreement or a little argument, which we should be avoiding, but human nature, that does happen. It doesn't mean it's the end of the marriage. Sometimes some people, for every small thing, they say we want divorce or we want out of this marriage. That is not the prophetic teaching. That is not the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted it. We got married in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah wants us to try. He wants us to sacrifice. Whenever we've had an issue, we should try our best to make things work. Let's let the communication be of a very high standard. Good communication is essential for a happy marriage. The minute communication is lacking, understanding is lacking, there is no fairness, no sense of justice, no one fulfills the rights of the other, we trample over the other person, then we have a bigger disaster. But every time we have a problem, the first step is not to discuss divorce. It is to discuss how to solve the problem fairly, with justice. Each one should work on his or her own habits or own weaknesses. Yes, when we highlight the weaknesses of the other, or when we say what we believe is wrong, it should be taken in good faith. And we should be trying to understand each other in a better way. And for this reason, that crisis that we face within our own homes, we can resolve it if we were to follow the divine teachings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِن تُصْلِحُوا وَتَتَّقُوا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورٌ رَّحِيمٌ Verse number 129 of Surah An-Nisa, where Allah says, If you were to make amends, resolve the matter, and be conscious of Allah, Allah is most forgiving. You forgive, you forgo, but that forgiveness, when it comes from human beings, it may not be more than a certain number of times. You cannot expect your spouse to forgive you today, tomorrow, the following day, and every day. There will come a time when patience runs out because your spouse is only a human being. Be fair, work on your bad habits, understand that we have to look after each other. Marriage, my brothers and sisters, is a very big sacrifice. There is no room for laziness in marriage. There is no room for selfishness in marriage. There is no room for putting undue pressure on your spouse in marriage. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every one of us. That is Allah telling us if you were to resolve the matter, if you are to do good to each other, it is far better for you. Allah knows, Allah is forgiving. Then unfortunately, sometimes we've tried everything. And people say we're staying together for the sake of the children. That might be possible if the issues are not so bad. But if there is shouting and screaming every single day with swearing each other, very bad habits, sometimes even physical violence, which is unacceptable. If that is happening, then it is not good to remain together for the sake of the children because instead we would be harming the children who would be growing up learning things that they're not supposed to be learning, learning that which is not good, watching, seeing, they would think that is how you treat a spouse. So sometimes, sometimes, for the sake of the children, it is better to separate. When you've tried every avenue, when you've exhausted every means, and you know that there is no way out when it's affecting your mind, and when you think that that's it, I cannot take any more. If you've tried separation, you've tried a few other things, subhanallah, Allah allows you to divorce. Allah allows you to go your own ways. And I know that's a major crisis. Some people are divorced when they don't want to be divorced. They feel that they could have made it work. And it is quite depressing sometimes. And a lot of anxiety comes into play. My brothers and sisters, you need to understand. If you've been divorced and you feel it was unfair, or you feel you could have made it work, but your ex-spouse is just not interested, you need to know something. Allah says in the Quran, giving you a lot of comfort. Verse number 130 of Surah An-Nisa. If the two separate in divorce, 
the two have divorced. Allah will bless both of them with his virtue because he definitely is the owner of great virtue and he is very wise. Allah has broad virtue, subhanallah. So remember, divorce is not the end of your life. It could be the beginning of a much happier life. And usually if you have faith and you keep trying, it is the beginning of a much happier life. How many times have we heard of people who've been divorced more than once? And then they marry for the third or fourth time and they are so happy, they forget all the hardship that they went through the first time, the second time, etc. So my brothers and sisters, it is not the end of the world. So Allah says, when you separate, be respectful. You don't need to engage in mudslinging, speaking bad about the other. You need to worry about yourself to the degree that you ask Allah for goodness, not just for you, but even for your ex-spouse. More so if that ex-spouse is a parent to some of the children that you have in common together. So you need to make sure the children grow up respecting the person you disagreed with for as long as that is possible. Yes, if they have very bad habits, for example, if they are abusers and if they have engaged in huge crimes, you may want to save and protect your children to a certain degree, but be very fair and just about it. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the same surah, O you who believe, be fair, stand upon justice, bear witness for the sake of Allah, even if it is against yourselves, your parents or your relatives. Whether they are wealthy or poor, Allah comes before all of them. That is verse number 135 of Surah An-Nisa. Be just, be fair, even if it's against yourself. Don't say things or do things or pass judgment that is very unfair. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection. So that type of a crisis where we have discord, where we have so much of turbulence in the home, let's learn to be fair. Let's learn to give people a chance. Let's learn to try our best. And ultimately, if it does end in divorce, it's not the end of the world. We should concentrate on building ourselves and we should concentrate on uh, trying again by the will of Allah and wishing well for our ex-partners. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. Now, there is a very, very important issue. People are plunged into crisis when others backbite about them, slander them, have deceived them, have wronged them, have oppressed them. They are plunged into crisis because at times you get to hear drips and drabs of what is being said about you behind your back. Or there is not much you can do about someone who has stolen from you or deceived you or someone who has oppressed you, harmed you. So you complain to Allah. That will bring about a lot of comfort. When you complain to Allah Almighty, remember He hears you. He will definitely come to your help. That is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And some people say, well, you know, I'm not going to talk bad about someone who's stolen from me, so I'm just going to keep quiet about it. Allah says, when you are wronged, there is no harm in speaking about what happened. You have to talk about it. You have to inform some people who are going to be able to do things about it, and that will not be considered backbiting. Backbiting, the Prophet ﷺ says, ذِكْرُكَ أَخَاكَ بِمَا يَكْرَهَ to mention that of your brother, which he or she would not like if he or she had to hear about it or were told about it. So in their absence, you're saying something they wouldn't have liked. That's called backbiting. Although what you did say was true, may have been true. If it was not true, it is slander, which is even worse. But when you have been wronged, there is no harm in warning others or even informing them. You might have to go to authorities, perhaps the police, and you might have to lodge a complaint. You cannot claim to be so pious that you arrive at the police station and say, someone did something to me, but I can't tell it to you because it will be considered backbiting. So Allah says, not at all. You must complain, you must raise the issue, and you have every right to do something about it because you were directly involved. Let's listen to the verse. Surah An-Nisa, verse number 148. Allah says, لا يحب الله بالسوء من القول إلا من ظلم وكان الله سميعا عليما. Allah does not like 
that you openly declare some bad or evil in your speech, something bad in your speech, unless you have been wronged. If you are wronged, then you have every right to say something which might be bad about someone else, which is true because you were directly affected as a first party. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us. Allah says, Allah is broad in his knowledge. Allah knows absolutely everything, subhanAllah. So my brothers and sisters, we need to make sure that when we uh, know someone has wronged us, to highlight it to others in a very respectful way because we were involved, actually is considered an act of worship. If someone were to come to you and say, you know, I'd like to do business with so-and-so, um, what do you think? You either tell them what you know, or if you don't know, you keep quiet. But if you know something and you know they, were, they are very deceiving and you've done business with them and it's firsthand, it happened with you, and then you remain silent, you're actually doing something wrong. The same applies to marriage. If someone came to you and told you, I want to get married to so-and-so, please give me some good advice. Can you give a reference? To give a false reference is actually a sin. So you need to give a true reference. If really you don't want to say anything, you can say, look, I'm not going to say much. Please find out from someone else. You haven't really lied, but you've excused yourself. Still, it would be a great act of worship if you told the truth in a very respectful way. Look, I've dealt with this person. Unfortunately, they stole some money of mine, according to me, and they were not very honest. They did this and they did that. If you were to say it as a party who was involved in the matter, then it is not considered backbiting. My beloved brothers and sisters, by virtue of this particular verse, number 148 of Surat An-Nisa, may Allah protect every one of us and grant us goodness. May Allah grant every one of us. Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters. Hope this video was helpful for you. This may help help others too so please consider sharing and we will bring more videos in the future inshallah so consider subscribing and you won't miss any jazakallah khairan